have to, it, it just measures, right? It doesn't have an opinion. Um, so, you know, Mike has been a pioneer in, in golf instruction for about 100 years. Which means we're, all, <laughs> we're almost as old as each other, aren't we? And, uh, we are the same age. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's, there's a book out right now, and it's called Skin in the Game. And, um, you know, they, they say that you, you, you develop your skills out of digging it out of the dirt, and Mike teaches, you know, 10 hours a day. Uh, six days a week, sometimes, sometimes seven. So, you know, so as a consequence, um, you know, what we use the technology for is, um, you know, to, to understand how, you know, how we visual, you know, visualize the golf swing uh, is, is categorized, right? So, you know, some people move more to the right, some people move more to the left, some people move up, down, you know, rotate more, rotate less. Like, so the question most people have is, wow, that technology is really cool, how do we use it? So we sort of, can combine that into this presentation. There's different ways that people move. So um, let me just go through some of the lessons you know that I've given and sort of just give an understanding of you know where I was going with these. I think the first one uh, I'll use. This is uh, some you'll know. It's a PJ Tour player. So I'm just going to bring the video up. Cool thing is when you when you use the video, you can just you know hit play and. You know, I think Phil, you call this functional accuracy. So you can already see, you know, sort of the, uh, your side is probably better, you know, how similar it looks. Now, we can use some of the visuals here uh, to talk about what, what Phil was just saying. For example, the sway visuals. So we've got uh, a yellow line and a blue line extended down. The yellow line is the upper body, and the blue line is the lower body. Now, a pretty common mistake I see, all levels of golfers, I mean, so for example, if somebody hangs back with their upper body, you know, it tends to, you know, disable their ability to, to load into the front leg, which is a shallow one, right? Mike, you want to talk about We see a lot of shallowing, right? So what would you say is the, most well, common, the best shallowing move? The worst shallowing move is to drop back. Right. The best uh, shallowing move is uh, a, a shift to allow it to... Yeah. Right. So this guy uh, was an absolute superstar when he was, um, you know, 17. He won the European Tour, swinging at 120 plus. Right now, I think he's swinging about 117, uh, 113. Sorry. So we can see uh, the yellow and the yellow and uh, blue line basically represents the the sway, side to side movement in inches of the upper body and lower body. And as Phil said, when we see his his chest and and pelvis are almost identical. Yeah, so he's kind of stacked, right, we call that, but both have moved to the right. Um, those numbers are probably a little bit too high for that point in the swing for him. Um, but what we see, you know, what Phil is saying is an absolute for, for golfers is that, the, you know, the head, chest, hips all move towards the target in transition. That's one of the, what we call it? Truth. One of the truths of golf. Mm -hmm. And so we can see pretty Trans easily here, we got Joel, I'm going to show Joel, and that does a better job of this. You can see that as he starts down that gap, sort of increases in his yellow and blue line there. So his head gets left behind. So we can look at that on a video, of course, but we actually have numbers for it and we can talk about it. So for me, um, he's he's unable to really, you know, load into that front leg because his head is too far back. Um, so Mike, when you talk about what you see from his sort of lower body loading up. Well, what you're going to see though here, because this is falling back, you're going to see uh, loss of distance because he's not able to to load into the ground. And uh, uh, the second thing you're going to see with the upper body hanging back, you're going to see a lot of arm wrap and the club face closing and the ball going left. And uh, that's where he's living in right. the left trees. So we can also see that, um, you know, because this is not going forward together, he's not able to lower his center of mass or load into the ground. So there's an unweighting that happens. So we we lose height, so we can see that in lift. So it's a negative number if we're losing height. So we can see he doesn't really get down to some of the numbers we're going to see with other players. So he's really staying sort of level, and then lifts, you know, like one inch. So he's losing a ton of power, you know, really for two. There's reasons. no load. There's no. Uh... So if he could, you know, potentially load more forward, so sway with his chest, and more down. Then what would happen to his club face? No, well, square up, and he wouldn't be closing, and he also uh, gained tremendous club speed. I mean, we saw that with Luke. Right. So let's bring Luke up. 
So I've got a new, so Luke went to see Mike in the middle of last year. He's been doing very well. Yeah, he was swinging the club at 107 and, uh, and hitting it crooked. Um, basically, he hit a right and left miss. He said, which isn't fun at all. So he came out and Terry and I have been working with him um, the last eight months, uh, nine months actually. And uh, his club head speed has gone from 107. He's topped out at 119, but he kind of lives between 115 and 117. And uh, he now finds the middle of the club face every time, and the ball is going in play. This was in uh, Palm Springs last week. He, he finished number one in fairways right. and number three in greens regulation. Two. Was it? Wow, pretty good. So we can see, you know, Luke, Luke's uh, what we call a real post golfer. So, so what I was going to say earlier is that we have a category. So uh, Bruce Rear, a good friend of ours, had a saying. He says, um, use it, don't fix it. So if somebody's showing a tendency, there's a pretty good chance that that is either they learned it and they're over, you know, doing it. Or most commonly, if we see a big sway or, or a shift to the right, um, like Luke, then you know, that's because it's his nature. Some people, you know, they pivot around different hits when you talk about. Well, okay, first of all, okay, understand one thing is, is that you don't teach from the middle. Everybody thinks that if everybody shifts too much here, they gotta stay more here, or they stay too much here, they gotta get more over here. Uh, we saw uh, Yanni Singh who uh, stayed left, and we saw Lydia Ko who moved right, both moved to the middle, and both were no longer number one in the world. We saw uh, Hunter Mahan who was left, uh, and moved to the middle, and we saw Gary Winman, uh, one of the best players in the world, who shifted to the right, stayed more center. Now, neither one can play a lick. Uh, see, we're all predisposed to move in a certain pattern, and what we like to do is keep people where they are, because there's great golf played on either side of the middle. And uh, what we want to do is let you be who you are and utilize this. Now, the, the great thing about the tool is, is, is it gives us information. I mean, without information, you know what we're doing is we're guessing. And uh, what Sportsbox does, this is definite uh, information. Before, you, uh, Phil used to come out, have to come out, and we'd set up, uh, set you up for about, what, an hour? Yeah. Would take you know, would, we go back, what, 30 years? You're giving it away, yeah. And uh, then it would take forever, I mean, and then we'd get it back a couple days later, and uh, by then, the person's gone, and we couldn't fix it. Right. But now, this is instant, uh, there's no putting markers on, and uh, you get instant feedback, uh, and you're able to make the changes. This is, this is one of the, I think it's one of the most revolutionary uh, things that's happened in golf instruction. Everybody, video will go away, and this is how you'll be um, working with students. This, now you're able to make them much better because you have the information of what they are when they're their best and what they need to be doing to get better. So let's talk about some of Luke's numbers. Luke started out in a very similar place to Sung Yo Lo, right? So right. he was hanging back and um, wasn't, he, wasn't using the, the low quite as well as he potentially could. So we can see here. We also wasn't shifting to the right much. Right. So he's shifting now much better to the right. As he comes down, follow those lines, you can see the lines are staying together, so they're basically his upper body, lower body tracking. He's a little bit more to the right because you know he has what we call a counter swivel. Right. So he has a strong grip. So if you have a strong grip, he'll tend to you know, get the chest a little bit more behind the ball. A weak grip, like our friend Joel at the back here, is gonna have you more on Carol top of the ball. So when you talk about those a little bit. When you look at okay, uh, BJ Singh uh, and uh, Colin Montgomery, who are all more this way, they move, they shift to the right, but they have a counter tilt, which actually helps in their downswing position. And then the guys who are more under and rear, they have to have a counter swivel because otherwise they can't access their dominant dimension. Same thing with people who are more front. More front post players who want to go low. I mean, everybody stand up. This is good. <laughs> Steve, why don't you come on up here? Okay, now, if I, and put your hands together, Steve. If I had you take the club back under in this position, you have no problem getting to the right, do you? No, I feel like I'm moving right there. Okay, now, if I take you more in an upright position, 
where do you want to go? To the left. And, and if I take you more in the middle, where are you? Stay more simple. So uh, in a perfect world, uh, somebody who is upright would be more left, and somebody who is uh, flatter would be more right. Well, but the problem is uh, people are messy, and there is no such thing as a perfect world. So we have to understand what they are, because we're going to have people who are under and front, Zach Johnson, and under and rear, like... Uh, uh, under and rear, Luke Donald, how about uh -huh. that? Luke Donald. Uh, yeah. Lydia Coe. Lydia Coe is a perfect example. Of okay. So it's very common for players that tend to move more to the right to get restricted, right, I would say. Right. So as soon as they start restricting people, what happens is they lose mobility and they lose power. Uh, everybody thinks uh, getting more connected, keep your butt against the wall, stay in posture and all that stuff is going to help you become a better ball striker. It's going to hurt your back and you'll hit it shorter and you may hit it straighter but it's shorter. I mean, if you only have to walk this far to hit your next shot, you know that there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we can see with Luke, he has a very high you know, pelvis sway number early in the swing relative to the next person I'm going to bring up, which is Joel. So he's a front post. Uh, Luke's a rear post. So we can see really good shift off the ball. He starts to recenter and move back towards the target. And now, like I said, he's got this gap. Uh, you'll see a difference with Joel um, because he's a stronger group golfer. And, but what we like about this now is they're moving together towards the target, which is a big improvement for Luke. And now, He's also lowering, so we can see the pelvis negative lift number. So Luke is, is moving towards the front foot much better than he was, but he's also lowering into his front leg. And now that's a really important piece because the majority of the rotating force in the golf swing comes from the lead leg. And so because he's now able to push down at the right time, what we see is he's pushing up three inches through impact, but he's also got a significant more a significant amount of pelvis turn, whereby he used to stay back and slide, which if you know the guy Luke, he's, he's a bad back, so right. he won't do that. That was, that was the biggest thing, is because he, he was so much back in here, uh, there was so much flip through the golf ball, his ball, he fought left, and that's why he kept weakening his grip, which kept making him worse and worse. And uh, so he quit, so that, that lateral caused him bad back, and when uh, he went from number one in the world to somebody who wasn't playing very well or playing very much. He had a lot of weekends off, though. Okay. <laughs> a lot of weekends with the family. Uh-huh. <laughs> Joel, so, stand up. So we have Joel Stouter here, who has won on the European Tour. And... Uh, Twice? No one. And he was the first team All-American for probably the best college team ever, I think, with uh, Brandon Hagee and Michael Kim and Max Homer. Max Homer. Pretty good team. And it's a perfect example, right? So Joel came out, you know, he won, struggled a little bit, and then, you know, sort of got some bad information, and which basically, you know, restricted his swing down to, to losing speed and accuracy, right? So this one you actually crushed. Tell us a little bit about your driving and yeah. how it got better. Yeah, we changed the uh, theory, we changed a lot of things. Uh, I would say we can make grip, uh, starting to use the ground more efficiently. I mean a lot of uh, a lot of things and a lot of things I mean I misunderstood. So coming out of college, I had a weaker grip, and I hit this kind of cut or sometimes slice, and, and I tried to change that uh, to get a stronger club face. And by uh, strengthening my grip, which was a really bad idea, and from there, from that point on, I kind of went down the rabbit hole. So uh, so yeah, thankfully I met Terry and Mike, and they started fixing me and. Well, I to understand no one fixes time. anyone. You can only give good information, and then people have to yeah. fix themselves. You're you're a great uh, great learner, Joel. And you ask lots of great questions. So let's watch um, just an example. We can see, you know, Joel is a front post and side cover, right? So he has a weak grip, like uh, Aaron Bowley, mm -hmm. and you know he he moves a little bit to the right, but he moves to his front leg very quickly. So everybody moves a little bit to the right to you know sort of offset you know the inertia, I think, felt to overcome the weight of the club. So we can see that just in the start of his back swing, we can see his, uh, you know, his pelvis will sway slightly, so negatives away from the target. So he starts, we, we judge it as uh, club movement is zero, so he starts moving to the right uh, about one and a half to two inches, and we can also see he's pushing into the ground and lifting about an inch. So he's moved, you know, swayed to the right and lifted to start the club moving. 
But what he's going to do is he's going to recenter earlier because he's a front post and he naturally will be more on his front leg. And his upper body will remain centered because he's got a weaker grip. So to Mike's point earlier, we call that counter tilt. He's not really you know, bending back towards the target, but it really feels like a jaw, right? I mean, it yeah. feels like he's uh, almost inside out up here. So we can see the consequence of that is this blue and yellow line. You know, and all his numbers are pretty much zeroed. Um, stacked. Stacked, and as he moves towards it. So, you know, being stacked, uh, and I don't mean the stack and tilt phrase, but just being centered has been a very common thing that apparently all elite ball strikers do. And it's not really true. So if you wanted to stack somebody like Joel, then you know, he's going to hit it better. If we stack Luke, he's going to hit it everything left. So you have to understand this is where we come to you know, categorizing things. And so if we watch this transition, we can see now that his you know, yellow and blue go really well together. And to Phil's point, we're going to see those separate uh, as the speed increases. Ooh, yeah. So we see the yellow moving back. So this is important for people to understand. You look at the picture and you go, well, you know, he's behind the ball. But we saw, using the app, we can see it a lot more dynamically, how he now has moved his chest away from the target, but it's very much the ground forces that are... Mm -hmm. And the pelvis yeah. stays stable. Stable. Right, so this keeps going and stabilizes, mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. see it moving towards the target, some people stabilize, and then continuing moving towards the target. That's a really good graphic. It's, it's really cool, really isn't it? Cool. So, so we can see, you know, if I show that again, you know, he's, he's, he's lowered, um, and it's pushing up, so I think he goes down, whatever, about an inch. The jaw like could be more if he wants more public speed. But he does a really good job of lifting. So he lifts a total of three inches, you know, from, from his lowest point to after impact, which is a really good assist in the release. You want to talk about how the arms and legs sort of help each other there, Mike? Well, I mean, uh, basically, you can't extend the arms down unless the body's pushing up. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have room. And that's, all, that's what it's all about. Not only is it creating force, but it's creating room for the arms to swing. And uh, the better, if you loaded more and pushed up more, you'd have more speed. And you would not hit it more crooked, you'd hit it straighter. And we found that that's with, right. I mean, Baz, especially. That's right. Baz went up to 124. Wow. Yeah, I can go across here somewhere. I'm not sure if it's a good one. We'll see. So let's see who else we got. Um, if I can add this, you know, I was doing more of Luke's. Or like what Luke needs to do, that's what I was doing more of when I struggled. So it's yeah, it's interesting how um, I'm getting right, and that's why it's always interesting as a player. We're, well, we're moving in a certain way that are not our natural to find ways to hit the ball, you know, when we don't know what we're doing. Uh, I was real fortunate a couple, couple weeks ago, a uh, former number one player in the world, who's a member of the medalist, uh, came across the driving range. Is he blonde? Huh? Is he blonde? Uh, he's kind of... Uh, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> came up to me and he, he says, you know, I can't find the ball after I hit it. He says, any way you can take a look at me and see what I'm doing. So I watched him hit some balls and there's a guy that had been here, all of a sudden gripping it here, and all of a sudden he's hitting up on it and swinging the right and the club face is closing. And he's hitting uh, blocks and hooks and he says, I can't play golf like that. He says, the ball is moving left one inch, it's too far. Uh, so we fixed him, got him this. Got everything happening correctly. All of a sudden, the ball started coming out of the right, correct window. And he started hitting fades, and then he cornered me at nine o'clock the next morning. We we worked again, and then he kicked Bryson's butt in the in the match, and uh, almost won Tiger's tournament. That's right, but good for a bit there. And so, uh, and then I see him two weeks later, and he says, "I'm, I'm struggling a little bit." We went, we fix it back, and all of a sudden, he started playing again. Well, another guy that we work with is uh, Adam Svensson, and Adam is. Same type of thing. He, his right hand is slipped to here, and he's hitting uh, blocks and hooks. Um, moved his right hand back up top, finished fourth in, in uh, Hawaii, and had a chance to uh, finish top 10 again. He had had a better back of nine and, uh, in right. past ranks. But so the important thing is, again, just to refer back to uh, technology, I think the, the industry's approach to technology has been limiting because they're always searching for the average. The second thing is, you know, this is still outcome-based information. This is, you know, whatever you thought of the golf swing, whatever caused you to swing like you do, this is the result of it. And, um, 
Okay, hold on, I'll so, close the door. So the important thing is that you know we sort of need a, a, a system of understanding. Is that a good number or a bad number? And so Mike, we're going to have uh, Bill and a bunch of experts speak at our next uh, online seminar, which is the end of February. Yeah, we're doing the um, conference. So what we do, yeah, so what we do, um, but you know, like Joel the other day, we weren't chasing speed, uh, we were just changing some setup basics, and every time we made a change, the speed went up. So matching up people is, how, is, is the first course to speed. So in our seminar, which you can go online, ultimategolfers.com, uh, we're going to use Phil, and we're going to talk about how the different metrics that we look for are represented within this, like we've talked about here already. We have a, a kid, uh, uh, Aaron Macha, who is from uh, down in Florida, and Aaron's an ex-baseball player, 5'10", <coughs> and uh, he was 136.8 uh, the other day, and without pushing it. And all it is is just uh, by, by utilizing Sportsbox, we were to find some things that were wrong with his golf swing, fixed it, and all of a sudden, he started exploding, he says, wow, look what you did. I said, I didn't do anything, you did that. All we did was you got you doing what your body needs to do. And uh, through the research that uh, Phil has done, and you know, she, had it. she was a great player, but she can contribute a lot more to this game uh, with this tool, because this tool is gonna revolutionize golf instruction. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys are way ahead of the curve right now, because you're getting in on the ground floor. And this is, uh, you're gonna be knowing things that nobody else knows. This is gonna be, in six months, what we're talking about now, is gonna be part of the uh, golf instruction uh, discussion. Everybody's gonna start uh, talking about it. Because people were afraid of 3D. Mm -hmm. Were they not, Phil? Yeah, they well, you, used to, you used to have to pay $50,000 and right. put it in a studio and suit people up and have a biomechanics degree. And now right. you can have it in the palm of your hand. Right. Everybody can have it. This is a fantastic. Great I, it, this is what I've been dreaming of for the last 30 years. It's come and true. In the hands of Mike is unbelievable because Mike, in my opinion, has been the greatest contributor to, to applicable golf information. You know, you do this and it makes someone better at golf. He's not a you know a theorist who sits there talking. So Practical. giving this to Mike is going to make it much more usable. But you know, uh, the great thing about the tool, I mean, uh, she has the dream team. Do you not? Absolutely. The ones who are uh, putting the software together, people like Phil and Terry, and you were talking about probably the brightest minds in golf, and uh, not just golf, and in science, putting together a program and a tool that is constantly, every day it gets better. Every single day. Because today's application is going to be different than tomorrow's. There's a gigantic team behind the scenes with all sorts of different expertise. You ask a question. So, as a as a teacher, what yes. do you find is more important, the three D image for most players or the numbers? And how does that change between the um, like I think it. I mean, so the first thing that's very important is you you have a system for making a decision. Uh, once you make a decision, then coaching is is a communication art, right? So, how do I take it from my head to your body? Uh, this helps a ton. I don't know. It depends on the person. As Phil says, a lot of people don't like um, uh, you know, graphs. So the graphs are probably the least effective form of communication to a student. Um, what I do is, I, I, in the next iteration of the app, which is coming very soon, you're just going to be able to highlight a single number. So each of these boxes, they have linked numbers right now, but the next one's going to have single numbers. Um, so you can educate them as to uh, you know, three inches this way, two degrees that way, whatever it is and use the avatar, that's what I do. I usually say, look at this box and look at the picture and you know, so you potentially could go to a different... Don't, we, before view. you change that one, Terry, I just one real wonderful comment about what you just showed. If you can go back to that front view real quick. Um, you ask about the numbers versus the avatar. I think it's a combination. Yeah. And I think what we're coming up with are these graphics that we overlay on the avatar. That, those two lines dropping down to the ground, one representing the pelvis sway and the other one representing the, the chest sway. What Terry just pointed out about the fact that the pelvis stops and the uh, chest moves backward, that was shown beautifully by the, the distance yeah. between the blue and the yellow line. So if right. we can invent great little graphics like that, you don't have to go, oh, well, that one was 30 and the other one was 20. And they, they move apart and then they move back together. That is super powerful. 
Yeah, so any, uh, we're very open to suggestions, and it's a very fast developing. Just clever developing. little things like that, that all yes. of a sudden the light goes on, and wow, that's cool. There's a, a tour player that we've been working a little bit with by the name of Andres Albertson, and uh, I was struggling with some of the uh, things, and we put it on a sports box. You've got it in there. Uh, I don't have it on this one. Okay, and uh, Terry and I were able to find what the problem is, uh, immediately told it to him and uh, sent it to him. All of a sudden, the next day, it's the best I've ever hit the golf ball. Oh. Without the yeah, without that was, rule, we would not be able to that make was, that change. That was a very similar lesson to um, Sung and Leather. Right. He, he didn't have any lowering. Um, right. You know, and if you take the, the difference between, you know, video and a, and a uh, you know, 3D, uh, you know, People don't lower because they've been taught to stay in their posture and keep their ass against the wall, right? So that's a very undynamic thing. If you really do watch these uh, numbers, they're, they're moving, they're not staying still. Whereas, you know, if you draw lines, you can almost just assume or make up, you know, see what you want to see versus see what's actually happening. This tiger, uh, I think Tiger's got rods in both of his legs. And that was kind of interesting because historically, uh, this was at PNC, he had, um, you know, a ton of lift. So I think upper body wise, he's, he was moving very well, 90 degrees, you know, very classic. Um, but we can see through the ball here, is at his lowest point, he's about one and a half inches down and doesn't go positive. Um, so that's a big difference for Tiger. So it's kind of interesting to see, you know, he was swinging his arms really well, in my opinion. Looked very neutral. You know, Tim Kutschow was telling us that uh, he had videos of uh, Tiger in the 99 and 2000. Yeah. And in 2000, when he hit drivers, his heels were off the ground. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Down. That's cool. Do you have an older Tiger swing? I don't have that on my app. We have, you need it, we got it. Okay. But you know, it, it's a little bit, so the this is important to say, um, you know, I, there are sort of conditions where it's optimized to film. I mean, it needs to be about belt high. Is it about 10 feet away, uh, mm -hmm. GK? Nine, ten feet away yep, on a exactly. tripod gives you the best chance of getting really good numbers. But uh, I've shown people, you know, we, we've taken Hogan off of um, YouTube and it worked. Okay. So that doesn't mean that you can go on YouTube and take every single swing that's going to work. And if it doesn't work, there's something wrong with the app. It's just like, uh, you know, um, so that, some, some swings from the past work, which is great, which is like a bonus, but. Um, you know, don't, don't rely on it to work. Yeah, but think about that. Now you can go back and you can yeah. look at Hogan, you can look yeah. at Norman, you can look at Player, you can look at these guys and, and get their 3D. Right. It's just mind-boggling. It is me. really cool. So it just depends on the quality of the, the video and whether you're in luck that day. Yeah. Now, this, this is a young player from, um, just to give you some different metrics, a young player from uh, Illinois, uh, Coach Schultz. Yeah, Jerry G. So he was... Uh, you know, intentionally trying to keep his, his right knee flexed, whatever. Um, but the way, so the way that he uh, uh, naturally moves, he's, he's somebody that we want to see some fast rotation in. And, you know, so at the top, he's sort of restricted, and sort of a classic sort of 90 degrees and 40 degrees, which is, you know, on the lower side of somebody who's trying to be really dynamic. Um, let me see the after here. And why did why did you want to keep that or before any type of instruction from you guys? He, why did he, you want to keep that? He's from the Netherlands, okay. okay. Um, European teaching is a bit different. Yeah, yeah. I, I first met him over. That's how he ended up in yeah. Illinois. Sure. Um, he and I, I was doing a presentation for the uh, the Danish PGA and uh, and all and also the same thing in Holland and stuff. And he came up to me and, and he goes, um, "What do you know? What schools would you recommend I go to?" I said, "I said if Mike Small calls you, you go." And I said, because uh, he makes tour players. Mike Small is, uh, I don't know, he's a great coach because he's a, he was a great player and uh, he understands the game and he makes people better. But uh, European tour, uh, teaching is very much in, to inhibit it. Yeah, there's a lot of lines. Uh, move to the middle Yeah, house against the wall, stay in your spine angle, all the things that we love. Um, so this is the next thing. The interesting thing is, uh, you know, I didn't tell him necessarily to, to turn. Um, what we were doing is having him practice loading into his front leg and rotating and, and got rid of the swing forward trying to keep the flex right. And so as a consequence, we can see you know, he, turned, he added, uh, I think it's six or seven degrees of shoulder turn, but he added about 10 degrees of um, pelvis turn. Uh, the important part about this is we wanted that 
because we want the hands to be a little bit deeper so that when he loaded, he could keep turning on the power. So he pushed into his left leg well, which helped him clear, and we can see he's pretty open to impact. So that was a, you know, it was useful to see the numbers and what have you before and after. So, Mike, you want to add anything? Gee, hey, we need to be done-ish. Yeah, we're, we're over time, um, so we should well, wrap it up soon. You have a question, Joel? Yeah. Do you use it mostly on face-on view, or do you use it down the line as well? Well, you film from face-on, but you can use, it'll, it'll give you down the line and give you yeah. uh, everything. Yeah. If you didn't have 10 feet, you're in the teacher bay, and you don't have 10 feet from face-on. Not the wall out. This is important. Um, so we're testing the zoom factor, so, uh, being able to wide angle zoom it so that you can get a little bit closer. Um, so that's going to be an option. So you use the, the fish? Uh... Are you, it's actually on the app. You can actually, when you record, there's an option to zoom out to 0.5x. So. There's another, I mean, basically, uh, what not everyone realizes is that you film it from the front and then you get all six angles, right? So you potentially could look at the body action from below. I use that a lot for... Um, you know, teaching people how to get into the left side a little bit. That's really cool for the kinematic yeah. sequence. You can see the, right. the sway yeah. first, then the pelvis, then the shoulders, then the arm, the whole kinematic chain. And you, so depending on the variable, I mean, so if I'm not talking about uh, you know, shoulder, shoulder turn or chest turn, um, you know, might look above it, for example. It's crazy. And, you know, to your point, it's really a question of communication. So how do you combine the graphics and the, and the information together? And if you guys do have any ideas of little cool, oh, if you drew a line this or you attach that, it would show up better. Yeah, we love it. Because you get this off your video. No, <laughs> that's why uh, the tool is something that you need to have. Unbelievable. Right? And you know what we're going to do is going to be, you know, lots of different things coming online uh, to make the teacher's life easier. Um, and we'd love to have any suggestions, but. Um, and that, Eventually, you know, depending on the level of the teacher, right? Mike and I have got a very clear picture of what we're trying to do with each person. Um, but you know, eventually, I think we're going to have some assists in there as well. And then Mike, uh, Phil, Phil's got a great education pro program coming along to to teach you how to understand these things. Yeah, we but, talked about functional accuracy earlier, right. and functional accuracy just means will it tell you what you need to know, and, and will it be good enough to do that? The coolest thing of all that told me it was functionally accurate is when we did a video next to the avatar and you could instantly see that it was the same swing. I mean, you know. Or you, you guys had a quiz one time on Instagram or the who was it? did it right. like, whose swing is this? And it was just the avatar. That's if right. you can tell whose swing it is, then the avatar is right. moving correctly. Mm -hmm. And I, you mentioned that, and I'm sure everyone heard it, but in order to make the avatar, the avatar is made out of those data points. You know, it's not just a, a cartoon. Yeah. So everything. It's not know, an it's, animation. It's, it's, it's the motion. It's built from data, which is uh, why the, the avatar was uh, hard work early on. Terry, you sound like you're going to talk about uh, the machine learning side of things. Well, if I <laughs> knew. <laughs> Someone asked me the other day. It's actually interesting, right? So we did a comparative study. Uh, we've used AMM for the ground truth. So we train, you know, the machine learning and AI and what have you learns from the actual measured swings. Correct. And the interesting one for me, so someone said to me, uh, well, how, how does it see that, you know, because it's only a face on camera. So, well, being a smart ass, better to be a smart ass than a dumb ass. Yeah. That's what he's learned from me. <laughs> uh, being, being a smart ass, I said, well, do you understand how they, you know, put the spaceship on the moon, you know, in, uh, in um, you know, 1969 or whatever it was? They're like, well, no, I said, exactly. So, so I gave an example. <laughs> <laughs> it was getting towards the end of the day. I was a bit dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> they give so, him a glass of wine, he did fine. That's exactly right. So, um, so the interesting one is how accurate the flexion extension of the right arm is in the system. Mm -hmm. Just, I find this to be a really good example because, you know, obviously the arm disappears, you know, from view from the camera. Uh, so all the, the shoulder, elbow, wrist points are all oh, hidden. Here. They've completely been completely hidden. Completely hidden. But the accuracy of the the it's numbers amazing. are unbelievable. And so, Phil, I mean, you said to yourself, it's like. Not sure this can work, but every iteration that comes out, things like that, just blow our mind. But it, it doesn't make sense. Well, it knows, it, it knows how the body's connected. Right. It knows the length of the segment. It knows. Oh, it can't do that. Well, it's because you fed it good information. That's it. Well, I didn't. Now, wonderful engineers did. Correct. Yeah. We have a lot of engineers. There's, there's a big uh, team in the background. It's a great group of people. Can do. We're standing on the back of greatness. Yeah.
and, and makes it look like we know what we're talking about without people like Phil and Jihei and the rest of her team, uh, you know, we'd be up here just mumbling. Yeah, screw that too. <laughs>